Are you looking to give your special someone a sweet treat for a romantic occasion? Well, don't settle for a box of chocolate. Try making daifuku. These are filled mochi. You know, those stretchy rice little dumplings. Oh, they're sweet, but not too sweet. And I know your special someone will love them. So making that mochi wrapper is all about rice flour. I've got three quarters of a cup of sweet rice flour, and I'll add three quarters of a cup of water to that. And I'll just give it a quick stir. I first learned how to make mochi and daifuku from my sister-in-law, Michino. She's from Osaka and we made a strawberry version together. And ever since, I have been hooked. Now finished stirring, she taps the excess off her spoon. I have a large pot here with a little bit of water just under the base of a colander. You just need the steam to get at this rice paste mixture. So I'm gonna drop that right into the colander. The bowl of rice paste. And what's very important, whether you have a bamboo steamer or a pot, is you want to wrap your lids with a tea towel. This absorbs any condensation as the rice flour steams, so you won't get drips into the rice flour. Now later, as she removes the All lid. Right, after 20 minutes, there's not a whole lot of difference, but what we've done is essentially cooked the rice. Using tongs. Out that comes. She removes so, the bowl. what I wanna do, Hold on to my hot jar. Bowl. And then I need to melt some sugar into this paste. But first, scrape in your steamed rice into a saucepan using a spatula. And you'll add to that half a cup of sugar. She does. And on medium heat, you want to melt the sugar into this warm rice flour paste and stir quite vigorously. She uses her spatula. Because now you're going to develop the stretch, the gluten of the mochi that is so familiar. Gives it that chewy texture. And later. All right, it's been about four minutes and I've got a nice stretch. So I'm gonna take this off the heat. She turns the stove off. And it is traditional when you're making strawberry daifuku to tint the mochi pink. She adds a few drops of food coloring and stirs that in. There we go, it really takes the color well. And while it's still pliable and flexible, you want to dust a clean work surface with a generous amount of cornstarch or potato starch. She sifts some onto her board. And do the same for a nine by 13 pan. She does that too. Just so you can move the mochi around. There we go. I'll scrape this out onto my work surface. And immediately as you get it off the pot, it starts to cool. You want to put a layer of the cornstarch right on top of it. With a sifter. That way you can handle it. I'm just going to let this cool for a minute or two until I can kind of touch it and move it, and then I'll roll it out a little further. It is cool, though. She pokes it with a finger. A few times. Okay, stop playing. Then leaves. All right. And later. It doesn't take long for it to cool and start to thicken up on its own. Using a rolling pin, dusted with a little cornstarch to gently roll this out to a rectangle. And now, because it is still so warm and pliable, I want to chill this for about 30 minutes. Rolled into the pan. And then it'll be ready to fill. Later, she returns with the cooled dough and slides it out of the pan. Once the mochi has set, it's easier to handle. So just like cutting out dumpling dough or a cookie dough, use a two and a half inch cutter and then just cut out shapes from the mochi. She does circles. Red bean paste made from azuki beans is traditional. And sometimes you see a little bit of red bean paste and a fresh strawberry inside each. To add that strawberry flavor, but make daifuku that last, I use freeze-dried strawberries. I crush them up and stir them into the red bean paste. So while this is called mochi, the minute you fill it, it becomes daifu. She uses a melon ball sized scooper for the paste. I don't know how you are when it comes to making dumplings, but I always find it takes a couple to get into the groove. She puts a dollop in each circle and seals the dough around it. And kind of like a truffle, they deserve to be packed in a little box for gifting. But first, she nestles each in a pleated paper cup. Truly a special treat to make for your special someone on a special occasion not your everyday chocolate box, you will love these daifuku. She holds one up. I will too. Takes a bite and chews. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Then shows us the red bean paste in the middle. The strawberry just comes alive, and I love the chewiness. She eats the rest of it. 